So I recently sort of upgraded my home server, and this is the old one. This currently has an i5-6500 installed, so I figured let's see how a 6th gen i5 compares against 3rd gen. And not just on processing power, but how do the iGPUs compare? As you can see, I'll be comparing this against the 3570, and as far as the basic specs go, these two are very similar, with the 3570 clocked about 200 megahertz higher. Now when it comes to each integrated GPU, there's a huge difference. The 6500's base speed is clocked at nearly half half of the 3570s, not to mention far more shading units, TMUs, ROPs, and almost double the max resolution. When we look at GPU-Z, there's also something you might notice. The 6500 is a DDR4 capable CPU, but on this board, it's saddled with DDR3, well, DDR3L to be exact. It was sort of an in-between stage, but that'll actually be good. Many times when we compare old versus new, one excuse is, oh well, the new one has far faster RAM, so that's one reason it's faster. Well, not here. Yeah, the 6500 won't be pushed to its limits, but we'll be able to see performance improvements from the processor itself. Maybe later on, if there's interest, I'll pick up a DDR4 board and, and compare that. Well, first, let's run some CPU-only benchmarks. With 7-Zip, they performed about the same, with the 3570 actually finishing 4 seconds sooner. But that's so close that I kind of consider it a tie. In Handbrake, the 6500 averaged about 6.5 FPS higher and finished 2.5 minutes sooner. And also, this is without Quick Sync enabled. The Cinebench single core run, again, showed the 6500 pulling ahead by about 2 minutes. Now that's 2 minutes, and it's 3 generations newer. In the multi core run, it again finished first, but only by about a minute. Now we're not done yet. This is just the bar graphs of the CPU run tests. Now again, maybe DDR4 RAM would help, but currently an i7 from three generations prior still scored higher, except in the single threaded test. Now here's where it gets crazy. I love how the newer Skylake iGPU is called HD Graphics 530, while the older Ivy Bridge HD Graphics is called the 2500. It would make you think that it's either older or would be far less powerful. But as you can see, that's definitely not the case. The 6500 in the Sanctuary benchmark scored nearly four times higher than the 3570. In Heaven, it scored nearly three and a half times faster. And in Superposition, nearly four times faster. is working under Earth's atmospheric conditions. Get a move on! Oh, and it gets better. Here, I have them running Destroy All Humans, the remastered version. I bet you never thought 9 FPS would appear so smooth. I don't even think the 3570 is actually hitting 3 FPS, because that looks more like 1 FPS to me. In Raft, it was the same thing. Here, the 6500 appears to be much smoother, but there was a ton of input lag, so it really wasn't very playable. Where with Destroy All Humans, that played absolutely fine. Now something much older, Unreal Tournament 3. Yeah, the 3570 was almost at 30 FPS, but it was really struggling just to average that. The 6500 averaged 47, and as you can see, the iGPU wasn't even hitting 100%. So there's a bottleneck somewhere, it's probably the RAM. Need for Speed Most Wanted, well, the 6500 hung around 30 FPS nearly the whole time, and no, V-Sync was not enabled. And the 3570, well, struggled to average about 7 FPS lower. Now with Fallout, since it's an older game, I have it set to Ultra at 1080. Neither were too happy about it, but the 6500 scored over double the average frame rate. With Crisis Remastered, I always run the benchmark at 720 with the low preset. The 6500 had issues loading the sky textures, but other than that, as you can see, it performed far better. Portal 2, well, as always, it ran fine on both, but once again, the 6500 won.
GTA 4, the 3570 reminded me of what it was like to play this game on the Pentium D. Now, yeah, I know, it's not the 3570's fault. With a proper GPU, it would run just fine. But with its integrated GPU, yeah, this was unplayable. But the 6500, yeah, totally playable, as you can see. I'll let the benchmark run if you want to see it. If not, just go ahead and skip ahead. GTA 5 was better, but not great. Even though the frame rate on the 3570 was better than GTA 4, the input lag was just as bad and really made it really difficult to play. I'm sure I could lower some settings and make it playable, but that's not the point here. I'll let the last bit of the benchmark play as usual, and once again, go ahead and skip ahead if you don't want to see it. So yeah, as we saw before, the differences in just processing performance weren't huge, and that might improve some with DDR4 RAM, but the iGPU is the biggest update. I include the results from an RX 550 and a GT710 just for comparison, but you can see the 6500 or the HD Graphics 530 is nowhere close to what the RX 550 can do, but definitely is a step up from a 710. For BeamNG, for the life of me, I couldn't get it to load with the uh, 3570's iGPU, but I included the results for the others. Ivy Bridge and even Haswell CPUs are often used by many of us because, well, they're easy to come by and they still work great. But for those who would be throwing together, let's say, uh, something like a home theater PC that'll also be used for, you know, light gaming, if you're planning on using the iGPU, you might want to jump ahead a few generations because as you can see, Intel made huge strides. Well, if you're still here, as always, thank you. And let me know what you think in the comments. And I'll see you next time. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.